Most of you are probably aware that today is the first day of the month of Damodar, the first day of Kartik. And uh, it is an auspicious month uh, for Vaishnavas. And uh, many devotees oftentimes will go to India at this time of the year and go to Mathura, Vrindavan, and there they will try to take advantage of the uh, benefits, spiritual benefits, which can be obtained during the month of Karti by going there to render service in the Holy Dham and especially to hear from saintly persons about the wonderful pastimes of Krishna in Vrindavan with his eternal associates and uh, to go on Parikam, which is to visit the sacred places of pilgrimage where Lord Krishna and his eternal associates manifested their divine pastimes and during his advent here in this world. And in many ways, it's an opportunity for many devotees uh, to increase in some way uh, their service, which not does not necessarily mean whenever we hear increased service, sometimes it's often taken to mean that we have to become more physically active. <clears throat> But actually, Krishna consciousness is um, exactly that. <laughs> it means that also increasing our service means increasing our efforts to smarta vyam satatam vishnu, smarta vyonajatu chit, which means to always remember Krishna and never to forget him. And all the various rules and prohibitions which are given in the scriptures are meant to serve these two principles. So increasing our service can also mean remembering him, hearing about him, speaking about him. And uh, there is a natural effect that takes place on one's consciousness, and many devotees have that experience especially during the month of Kartik, when they go in, in this to um, take part in this collective effort and sometimes individual effort. They often experience that towards the end, they feel uh, rejuvenated, resuscitated, uh, inspired uh, to become more deeply committed to the application of the principles of Krishna consciousness in their daily lives after returning to the West, which sometimes for many uh, can be uh, uh, very difficult uh, to, uh, to be so absorbed all the time as that which is available during Kartik in Mathura and Vrindavan. Uh, it's an energy boost. And uh, Srila Prabhupada even uh, requested his disciples uh, to take advantage of these transcendental dams, holy places. And he specifically used the terminology where devotees can go to recharge their spiritual batteries. <clears throat> because at that time, during Prabhupada's manifest presence, devotees were in the West and uh, preaching in the West and uh, very actively propagating the Krishna consciousness movement in the West. And uh, therefore, he felt devotees needed regular opportunities to get their batteries recharged for the next uh, effort to return to the West and to take up their various duties. Duties, of course, are beyond uh, the top, beyond uh, the topics I wish to discuss today to define what are duties, but most devotees understand that duties must be performed 
for householders. They have their householder duties performed, which should be done in the proper consciousness. For those who are unmarried celibates, they have their duties to perform. And for those in the renounced order, they have their duties to perform. And uh, there are also prescribed duties according to one's uh, varna, but we won't go into that. That's not really the topic of our presentation today. The topic of our presentation is the month of Karti. And the benefits of the month of Karti, and I would like to also to follow up and take advantage of whatever time I will have available to discuss a little bit about who is Lord Damodar? What is Damodar Leela? Uh, because uh, it's described that uh, Kartik Vata means to uh, offer the Deepa uh, to Lord Damodar. In fact, it's described in the Kartik Mahatmya that anyone who offers a lamp to Lord Damodar in the month of Kartik can have all his past sinful activities from many kalpas immediately nullified. And also just simply by offering a lamp to Lord Damodar during the month of Kartik, he can actually be given the opportunity to never have to take his birth again in the material world. There's a certain benefit of this month of Kartik and when devotees hear something like this immediately, you know, oh, you mean there's a quick, <laughs> there's a quick route? <laughs> there's something that really bestows immediate benefits that will actually uh, give me that opportunity to never have to take birth again in the material world and what to speak of to eradicate all sins that could be possibly committed not only in many lifetimes, but in many kalpas. But nonetheless, this is a statement of Kartik Mahatma, and we accept it as a as a statement, uh, which is factual. <laughs> of course, <clears throat> there is a certain benefit that's derived when one does so in the proper mood of rendering service. I wanted to read first before I read. I'm going to read today the prayers of such a Vratamuni, Damodarastika. The prayers devotees are probably familiar with. Many of you have been chanting them every year during the month of Kartik. Uh, and we'll read those prayers and we'll speak a little bit about them, about Lord Damodar. But before I do that, I wanted to read just as a conclusion to the benefits of the month of Kartik. This is a verse by Srila Rupa Goswami and a commentary by Srila Jiva Goswami in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, all of us should know, is a source book that Srila Prabhupada used for his nectar of devotion. He took the, nectar, the verses of the nectar of devotion, he compiled his summary study of the nectar of devotion, of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu in the nectar of devotion. And he also uh, spoke a little bit about some of the angas of bhakti. One of the angas of bhakti is angas, uh, limbs of devotional service, is to uh, perform kartik prata. And uh, I'm going to read one verse from uh, uh, Bhakti Rasamrita, which describes what is this kartik prata and what Srila Jiva Goswami has to say in his commentary, this verse which will simply, again, help to elaborate on what kind of benefits are available for this month of Kartik. It's not that everybody has to go to Mathura Vrindavan to benefit. Uh, one can offer Deepa, a lamp, to Lord Damodar in their home every evening, uh, to a picture of Lord Damodar and recite the Damodarastic prayers. Uh, one can increase one's service attitude by reading, increasing one's reading every day about the pastimes of Lord Damodar. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, the 10th canto, chapter 9, is uh, the binding of Lord Krishna by Mother Jasoda, is Damodar Lila. There's so many wonderful verses there, Prabhupada's commentaries are there. 
and uh, and Prabhupada, of course, perfectly weaves his commentaries along with the commentaries of our previous acharyas to write a very relevant description of what is Dhammadar Lila. We can do that during the month of Kartik. Every day, sit down and read a verse and a commentary from Srimad Bhagavatam. It's an opportunity to get something beneficial for ourselves, especially for those who are wondering, how can I make some advancement in spiritual life? It's a special benediction. And just as Lord Damodar is very munificent to devotees who render service to him in the month of Kartik, in the same way the month of Kartik is in the same way is very munificent to those who serve Lord Damodar in this month. So I wanted to read this one verse and commentary. It's it's short, and then we'll continue. This is uh, chapter 2 in the first wave, chapter 2, text 221. I'm sure most of you do not have access to Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, but it has been translated by Banu Maharaj in two volumes. And uh, in fact, uh, it's being edited and republished by Bhakti Vedanta Book Trust. We hope to see it sometime in 2023 published uh, with a lot of editing. It was quickly produced um, before, but it's uh, Rupa Goswami's treatise on the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the uh, waves of devotional service, ocean of devotional service. <clears throat> This is the verse, Yata Damodoro Bhakta Vatsalo Vidito Janai Tasya Yam Tadrisho Masak Svalpam Apuru Karaka. Translation Observing Urge of Rata, Urge of Rata uh, is another name for Kartik Rata. In fact, Another name, Shri Mati Radharani, is Ujjeshwari. She's also mentioned in such a Vratamuni's prayer, Namo Radhikayai to Diapriyayai. She's mentioned there because when we think of rendering service to Damodar, we should be thinking of rendering service to Lord, uh, to Radha Damodar, Shri Mati Radharani, and Lord Damodar. <clears throat> so, the translation is observing urge of Rata from the Padma Purana. Just as men know that Damodar is affectionate to his devotee, the Damodar month is also affectionate to the devotee. Even a little service performed during that month yields great results. That's the verse. Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and just part of Jiva Goswami's commentary I'd like to read. The month is affectionate, just as Damodar is affectionate. Thus, a little service to Damodar becomes multiplied if performed during that month. Uru Karaka means, this is from the verse Uru Karaka, it means a person, or in this case, the month. Make this no distinction between the person and the month. Urukaraka means a person, in this case, the month, who accepts something very small and makes it very big. Like a person who feels extremely indebted and performs great action for another person. I'll speak a little bit about this, but I just want to finish the commentary. Similarly, his month, called Kartik month, gives great benefit. It takes what is meager and makes it significant. Svalpam Urukaraka means the month of Damodara is a future giver of huge results for a little service. Is a future giver of huge results for a little service. 
that could be taken if we take it literally as we should <coughs> uh, it could be taken to mean that I should something that we can all take advantage of you know, everybody wants some results from bhakti of course it's interesting to note you now it's relevant and I'll just mention this then Sri Bhakti Loka which is a series of essays by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He writes about how everyone desires some result. The karmi, he desires result. He wants some fruit for his karma yoga. The jnani, he wants some result. He wants liberation. And surprisingly, you may be surprised to hear that the bhakta wants some result. Because we always hear bhaktas are not interested in any result. But what is the result the bhakta wants? A bhakta wants Krishna's pleasure. He wants Krishna to be pleased by his service. And he says that in Bhakti Loka, sometimes it is seized, seen that bhaktas become a little restless. And uh, they may come, uh, they may forget that the result of their service is Krishna's pleasure and not their own pleasure. And they may sometimes even abandon their sadhana practices due to some uh, feelings of inadequate inadequacy within themselves. Therefore, he described in this particular section, Bhakti Tucker was talking about patience. He says the karmis, they want fruit to brought results, the jnanis, they want liberation, the bhakta. What is the result he wants? He wants Krishna to be pleased. But sometimes it's not always easy to get Krishna's pleasure. In fact, there's a verse by Pallad Maharaj in the seventh canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. He's praying to his friends, uh, he's speaking to his friends. And he says to his friends, Oh, my friends, sons of demons, he was straightforward. They were, that's who they were. They were all sons of demons. He says, You can't please the Supreme Personality of God. Even if you become an expert Brahmin, even if you become advanced in etiquette or vast learning, nor by great sacrifices, nor by austerities, not by accepting vows, nor by chastity. None of these things will awaken the pleasure of the Lord. He says, the Lord is pleased only when one has unflinching, unalloyed devotion to him. And if he says, if one does not have this sincere devotional service, without sincere devotional service, Everything he does is simply a show. What is he saying? He's saying that what is Krishna attracted by? Love. Krishna's attracted by one's intent to do something to please him. Even if one's inadequate, we just read, even if one's inadequate, he takes something very small and meager and significant. And he makes it very good. Sorry, excuse me. He makes it very big. Another name for Krishna is Baba Grahi Janadana. Baba Grahi Janadana means he accepts the essence of a devotee service. He may do something which externally may appear to be very small. Look what Sudama Brahman did. Carried a few grains of grains of broken rice in the pouch to offer to, to his friend, Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna, when he saw Sudan Brahman, he snatched, he snatched the broken rice right out of from his pouch, right out of his hand, he took it from him. He said, this broken rice is sufficient to satisfy the entire universe. What? Externally, it looks like something very insignificant. Somebody say, somebody may say, who does Sudan Brahman think he is? 
they could have at least cooked something for Krishna. I mean, why did he have to bring broken rice? They may think it, it's a symptom of his lack of devotion. One looks at it externally. But Krishna is Baba Grahi. He knows the attitude. He knows, in fact, Sudam Brahma didn't bring something to offer to Krishna because he wanted something to, for, for, from Krishna. It's not like a, an exchange, I'll bring something to you so that you give. He wasn't thinking like that at all. In fact, it was his wife who pushed him to go see Krishna. <laughs> she pushed him. She said, look at you. You're, you're so skinny. You have no clothes. You have nothing. We're living in poverty. Why don't you go see your friend Krishna? Sutan Brahman was satisfied to accept anything. He was living very simply, but he was not so inclined. But because his wife pushed him, then he decided to go and she gave him some broken rice and said, here, bring this to him. So he wasn't thinking of offering something to get something in return. He was thinking of Krishna's pleasure. That is all. And as this verse we just quoted from Pallad Maharaj, he said, without sincere devotional service, everything is simply a show. What is he saying? It means that Krishna is looking for devotion. And that's what he responds to. When there's devotion, even it's a moment's devotion, even a moment's desire to want to do something for Krishna, it takes notice. And if one is not in that consciousness, then even though one may be a great Brahmin, even though one may perform great sacrifices, very learned in the scriptures, Bhagavad Bhakti Hinasya Jati Shastra Japastapa, this verse says, if one performs all kinds of if a person devoid of devotional service, even if he's been born in a great family or nation, even if he chants all kinds of Vedic mantras, even if he's expert in performing all kinds of sacrifices, even if he knows hundreds of verses, Bhagavad Bhakti Hinasya Jati Shastram Japastapa, it goes on to say that all of these are simply like ornaments on a dead body. What's their value? If a person has no devotion, what's the value of an ornament on a dead body? I'm a Brahmin. I'm a whatever position we may be thinking, a designation that we may think. No, they're ornaments on a dead body because it's devotion that Krishna is looking for. So although we may display things else, but Krishna's not looking at that, so we must be doing it to get somebody else's attention because Krishna's not interested. <laughs> He's not interested. So therefore, Prahlad Maharaj says it's simply a show. Just a show. Who are we trying to show? Krishna's looking for, of course, if we serve Krishna's devotees, Krishna also takes notice. We know that is the essence of our philosophy. Prabhupada always emphasized that point. <clears throat> that the best way to get Krishna's attention is to serve his devotees. <clears throat> That's another topic, but the point is, with, without sincere devotion, everything is a show. So, <clears throat> here, it's described by Jiva Goswami in his commentary, and that even a little meager service to render to Lord Damodar in the month of Kartik can give huge, huge returns by Lord Damodar. He's so grateful to somebody who makes the extra effort to please him in this month, to do something to please him. Even if one can't go to Mathura, he can do some service at home, he can increase his hearing and chanting, as we described. He can render, offer some lamp to Lord Damodar. He can come to the temple and clean Krishna's temple. There's so many various types of service that one can do as an extra service that can be done in the month of Karti. So that's um, the month of Damodar is, is a future giver of huge results for a little service.
Krishna will take what seems to be very little and small and insignificant in somebody else's eyes, and he'll make it very, very big. He expands, makes it very, very big. That's special dispensation of mercy that he um, dispenses to those who take advantage of this month of Kartik. Now, as I said, I wanted to read the prayers. I have a tendency, forgive me, I do have a tendency when I'm introducing a topic, I spend more time introducing it than getting to the topic itself. <clears throat> and uh, But I hope it, it was relevant, at least my introduction. But I didn't want to read some of the prayer of Satcha Bhatta Muni that we sing every year during this month of Dhammadra. And we'll be singing it this evening. I suspect I see some sand, which usually indicates that there'll be some candles, Deepa, and I see it's a picture. I can't see the picture. I'm assuming it's Mother Jasoda and Dhammadha. Yes. <clears throat> As we know, Dhammadha means one who is bound uh, around the waist with a rope. <clears throat> so I want you to read uh, these prayers. Maybe I, I'll read the first pr prayer of Dhammadharastakam. Namamishvaram Satchidananda Rupam Lasat Kundalam Gokule Bhajamanam Yasoda Biolukala Davamanam Paramrishnam Atyan Tato Duch Gopa Gopya. He says in his prayer to the Supreme Controller who possesses an eternal form of blissful knowledge whose glistening earrings swing to and fro, who manifested himself in Gokula, who stole the butter that the gopis kept hanging from the rafters of their storerooms, and, then, and who then quickly jumped up and ran in retreat in fear of Mother Jasoda, but was ultimately caught to that, but was, but was ultimately caught to that Supreme Lord, Sri Dhammada, I offer my humble obeisances. Something I could say about this first. That's the first verse. Nama Mishram Satchirananda Rupam Asat Kundalam Gokule Vrajama. No. He's praying to the Supreme Controller. There's a contradiction right here in this verse. I wanted to bring it to light. Somebody may say, uh-oh, uh he's starting off by presenting a contradiction. <laughs> what is he going to tell us? How can there be anything contradictory in the words of great Vaishnavas? But it is apparent contradiction because he's beginning his prayer to the Supreme Controller. But how is it that the Supreme Controller... <laughs> How is it that the Supreme Controller is being chased by his mother, Supreme Controller, who's carrying a stick, who's running in fear, fear of being caught, <clears throat> fear of uh, being punished, um, and uh, in many ways, uh, how is it that he's fearful if he's the Supreme Controller? <laughs> So it seems like something right there, right in the very beginning of the first verse, that really requires some, some addressing. And uh, we've many times discussed this. <clears throat> uh, it's a good opportunity to bring it up here that in Krishna, there are ex apparently so many different contradictions in his behavior. Apparently. But these kind of apparent contradictions in this behavior appear only to those who are devoid of the understanding of who is Krishna. They're devoid of the understanding of not only who is Krishna, but what does Krishna do? What are his pastimes? We're, this is a pastime what we're talking about right now in this prayer, a pastime of Krishna stealing butter, that was hanging from the rafters, distributing it to the monkeys, 
while Mother Jasoda was churning uh, yogurt into butter, and uh, she went to get some milk on the stove. It was overflowing, and uh, Krishna be became angry. Of course, Krishna is supposed to be peace personified. How does he become angry? Krishna is supposed to be Aptakama and Atmarama. He's supposed to be self-satisfied. Why was he so disturbed that his mother was not giving him attention? Again, there appears to be some contradictions in this pastime, which require uh, the right understanding about the nature of Krishna's pastimes. Krishna appears contradictory to those who don't understand how Krishna is bound by love. As such a Vrata Muni even rejects and speaks about in his prayer, in these Namadarastika prayers, how he's not interested in any opulences of, the, of Vaikuntha. He's not interested in any powers. He's not interested even in, in knowing Paramatma, the Lord in the heart. He's not interested in liberation. He describes in his prayers a disinterest for certain elements which are available by Krishna's bestowal of benedictions, which one may think is certainly an admirable attainment or aspiration. Liberation, the opulences, Vaikuntha. We often hear about Vaikuntha. The Vaikuntha means the spiritual world, no anxiety. What does Satyavrata Muni want? He's just simply praying, may that Lord, that form of Lord Dhammadar be always manifest in my heart. What are, the, what are the benediction is any greater for me than this? That's his aspiration. His aspiration is, may that form of Lord Dhammadar always be manifest in my heart. Nothing else of any, is of any interest to me. He wants to always remember that precious form. He wants to remember that precious pastime of Krishna rubbing his eyes and out of fear. He's crying. Why? When his mother is chasing after him with a stick. And not only is it so wonderful that Krishna is rubbing his eyes out of fear, but his testimony is given by exalted Vaishnavas. What makes it so astounding is that he's not pretending to be afraid. He is afraid. Now, Krishna, as, as the Supreme Controller, he is even feared by fear personified as the Supreme Controller. Why does he have to be afraid of anything? <laughs> He's eternal. His body is, never changes. He's, you know, he's certainly never born and never dies. Dvaita, Machuta, Manari, and Antarupa. He has no beginning. He is the beginning. But why would he have to be afraid? What reason would there be for him to rub his eyes in fear and be afraid? He's afraid because he's conquered by love. And the devotees who love him in spontaneous devotional service, who, out of a spontaneous affection to serve him as a son, as Yasoda is. In fact, Yasoda, Yaso means Yasa Da. Yasa means fame, and Da means giver. Yasoda means she is the one who gives fame to Krishna by this pastime. She gives fame to Krishna because everybody knows about Dhammadar. What happens? Krishna becomes afraid. He rubs his eyes. He's, he's about to be punished by his mother. He runs in fear and tells her to stop. If you go any farther, I've, I'm going to make more mischief. <laughs> he is very much afraid and crying. That seems like a contradiction. But for one who knows, Krishna knows that Krishna ultimately in his ultimate feature, his ultimate feature is that of a cowherd boy who eternally resides, of course, 
as Satya Bhattamuni describes in the first verse, who's appeared in Gokul. He currently resides in Goloka, but he very mercifully appears in Gokul to display these wonderful pastimes, childhood pastimes, and special pastimes, which are relished in Gokul, which don't even exist in Goloka, is he takes birth. In the spiritual world, nobody takes birth. Everybody's there eternally. There's no birth. But Krishna, when he comes to this world, he adds a special sweetness to his pastimes by taking birth as the son of Jasoda. And of course, it's not an ordinary birth. He says, a jopi son of Yatma, Uttanam Ishwaropi son. He says, Although I'm unborn, my transcendental body never deteriorates. Although I'm the Lord of all eternal beings, still I appear in every millennium in my original transcendental form. It's not a material birth. Somebody may think it to be a material birth, but the devotee knows Krishna comes by his own sweet will. By his own sweet will. Prabhupada gives the example. Gives the example. He says, just like... The, the warden in the prison house. When the warden is in the prison house, he comes sometimes to see what's happening in the prison, to see how the prisoners are doing, to see how the guards are performing their duties. And uh, he may make an appearance there. And when all the prisoners look out through their cells and they say, oh, just look and see, look at the warden is in prison just like us. <laughs> but no, <laughs> the warden walks in and he walks out. <laughs> He's not not bound inside the prison as the as the prisoners are bound. He can come and see. Oh, let me see how they're doing. In the same way, Krishna comes. Let me see how they're doing. He comes. Comes to deliver the the devotees and to annihilate miscreants. He establish religious principles. Like primarily, he comes to give pleasure to his devotees to display these beautiful pastimes of Vrindavan. Beautiful pastimes of Vrindavan. Where he displays his pastimes in the most human-like form. And when he displays his human-like pastimes, although he's the Supreme Lord, he behaves just like an ordinary child. Mischievous child. Gages in mischievous activities, to attract the attention of his parents, of the cowherd women, the cowherd men. He performs all of these mischievous act human-like activities, and this makes his pastimes especially very sweet. Because although he is the Supreme Lord, he is conquered by love. He's conquered by love. It means those who serve him, like the like the Vaishnavas, the devotees who serve Lord Damodara in a spontaneous mood, those who serve him out of spontaneous love, they render service to him in a way that is most pleasing to him. Why is it most pleasing? Because everybody else serves him because he's God. Everybody serves him because he's God. Just like a wealthy person sometimes, he doesn't know who his friends are because he thinks, are they becoming friends, my friends, because they know I'm wealthy? And in due course of time, they're going to want to try to ask me for something. But Krishna has all opulences. He's the most wealthy. He's the most powerful. He's the most beautiful. He's the most intelligent. He's the most renounced. He has all opulences. It's therefore, sometimes he likes it, not being seen as God. But who can treat him like that? Who can treat him as a child? Who can treat him as a friend and jump on his back? Would you jump on the back of God if you knew he was God? I doubt it. It cripples one's love to know that he's God. One's love is crippled. Krishna likes it when devotees serve him with pure love, selflessly, because they love him. And they want to please him. They want to give him pleasure. He relishes that service. He relishes being chastised by Mother Jasura. He relishes being chased by her stick. 
he relishes that love so much that he, he even though he's the all-knowing supreme personality of God, that by the power of their love, he forgets that he's God. That is the power of pure love. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur gives an example. So just like a bee enters into a lotus flower, and when the lotus flower closes, the bee is trapped. Now, although the bee is trapped and can't get out, it doesn't make any difference to him. There's so much nectar inside that lotus. So much nectar. He, he doesn't care that he's trapped in there. And he gives that as an example of Krishna. Krishna is so much attracted by his pure devotee's love. So much attracted that he enters into their hearts and becomes bound by that love. And becomes so bound by that pure love that they're thinking, he's my son, I need to feed him. I need to protect him. I need to see that his friends are protecting him when he's going out to the pasturing grounds with his friends. Sometimes he comes back at night and I see there's all these scratches on his body. They're playing roughly, it seems, and they're going. And Pancha Sodhi, she's sometimes she even chants mantras before Krishna leaves to go to the pasturing ground to protect him on all sides. Mantras to protect him. She thinks he needs to be protected by Lord Narayan. And he she chants all these mantras for his protection. Why does she think that way? She thinks that way because of her spontaneous love. Krishna is my son. When Krishna is returning from the pasturing grounds with his coward boyfriends, she sees demigods sh showering flowers from the sky. And she thinks, oh, look how wonderful my son is. The demigods are showering flowers on him. She doesn't think that, well, who is he? Why are the demigods showing flowers? He must be somebody. She, no. First thing she thinks, oh, look how wonderful my son is. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur gives the example, just like the mother whose son is the president. She still thinks he's his son. <laughs> Same way. Mother Jasodas thinks that about Krishna. Therefore, she punishes him. She chastises him. His friends play with him. And gopis, they sometimes speak very harshly to him. They have, everybody has a relationship Krishna, with Krishna, spontaneous love. And that is Krishna's greatest quality, Bhaktavatsalya. Bhaktavatsalya is described by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. It's the emperor of all qualities that conquers all other kings. Just like an emperor. He becomes the emperor when all other kings are, con are conquered. In the same way, Bhaktavatsalya is, a, is the quality of Krishna with, which reconciles all contradictions in his behavior. All contradictions are reconciled. They understand, yes, although he's the Supreme Lord, he's conquered by love. And because he's conquered by love, that is the highest principle. His devotee can make him a plaything in their hands. His devotee can make the all-powerful Supreme Lord dance and a plaything in their hands. Because that's what he's attracted to. That's what Satyavati Muni is describing in his prayers of Dhammadarastaka. I sort of like gave a little summary of some of the prayers in, in, in Dhammadarastaka in this description that which I just gave. I'll read the rest of the prayers in English so that you can understand what a wonderful prayer it is. And maybe when we're chanting it tonight and we're offering the deeper to Lord Damodar, maybe we can think how kind Lord Damodar is, that he's accepting this lamp, which I'm trying to offer to him with love, and he's giving me an opportunity, not only himself as Lord Damodar, but in, in the month of Karti, he's giving me the opportunity to do something more for him, and which will give me some 
benefit, some huge benefit in the future. Somebody has huge benefits, usually what they may think of. What will I get? But if you actually offer with love, the huge benefit you'll get is you'll come closer in your love, Krishna. You'll be remembering him more. You'll be grateful to those who remind you about him more. You'll be very eager to take part in those events which help you to remember him. In fact, you may even realize that there's some taste to be had by these experiences, a taste which will never be forgotten. He's so kind that he may simply just give some taste which you'll never forget. And that is the greatest fortune for anyone in the material world to have a taste of Krishna's divine mercy, which you'll never be able to forget. It will carry you through all forms of difficulties. It will carry you through your challenges of your life. It will carry you all the way back home, back to Godhead. Krishna is so kind. So this is a little bit about these prayers. And I'll, I'll read them. And forgive me for going a little bit over time. But it's not much over time. And it seems like you're listening. So I guess there's some benefit. <clears throat> and uh, uh, then after we end, I think, after I just read the translation of the prayers. And then I think there's Arti. Yes? And then... Dhammadarastakam? Oh, no, we do Dhammadarastakam during RT. That's right. Yeah, I heard. That's the way it's done. And then uh, what else is on? It, today is a special, a special dispensation, I think, in terms of, I guess, the prasadam is not being served out here. Is that what it is? What's happening? Huh? Oh, okay. Okay. But prasadam is there. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let me read the rest of the prayers. They're short, and then we'll have a party. Thank you. Hare Krishna. This is number two. Astaka means eight prayers. So we've read the first prayer. Second prayer. Upon seeing his mother's whipping stick, he cried and rubbed his eyes again and again with his two lotus hands. His eyes were fearful and his breathing quick. And his mother just sort of bound his belly with ropes. He shivered in fright and his pearl necklace shook. To this Supreme Lord, Sri Dhammadar, I offer my humble obeisances. Those super excellent pastimes of Lord Krishna's babyhood drowned the inhabitants of Gokula in pools of ecstasy. To the devotees who were attracted only to his majestic aspect of Narayan in Vaikuntha, the Lord herein reveals, I am conquered and overwhelmed by pure loving devotion. To the Supreme Lord Damodar, my obeisances hundreds and hundreds of times. O Lord, Although you are able to give all kinds of benedictions, I do not pray to you for liberation, nor eternal life in Vaikuntha, nor any other boon. My only prayer is that your childhood pastimes may constantly appear in my mind. O oh Lord, I do not even want to know your features of Paramatma. I simply wish that your childhood pastimes may ever be enacted in my heart. O oh Lord, the cheeks of your blackish lotus face, which is encircled by locks of curling hair, have become reddened like bimba fruits due to Mother Yasoka's kisses. What more can I describe than this? Millions of opulences are of no use to me, but may this vision constantly remain in my mind. O oh, unlimited Vishnu, O oh, Master, O oh, Lord, be pleased upon me. 
I'm drowning in an ocean of sorrow and am almost like a dead man. Please shower the rain of mercy on me, uplift me, and protect me with your nectarian vision. O oh Lord Damodar, is your form in your form as a baby, Mother Jasoda bound you to a grinding stone with a rope for tying cows. You then freed the sons of Kuvera, Manigriva, and Nalakuvera, who were cursed to stand as trees, and you gave them the chance to become your devotees. Please bless me in this way. I have no desire for liberation into your effulgence. O oh Lord, the entire universe was created by Lord Brahma, who was born from your abdomen, which was bound with a rope by Mother Jasoda. To this rope, I offer my humble obeisances. I offer my obeisance to your most beloved Srimati Radharani and to your unlimited pastimes. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity on this auspicious day of Kartik, first day of Kartik. And I hope that you will take something with you. Uh, there is uh, that will help you uh, in your aspirations during this month. Hare Krishna, Shiva Prabhupada.